Hello, this is Christoph Schindler, the guy who founded Real Displacement Textures and today I want to show you how to map those materials on complex objects. It often comes that I read in treats, in forums, that the materials are awesome and great and cool but you can only use them on planes. I mean, yes, using them on planes is really easy because you just uh, connect the material to the object, you tell it how many tiles you want to have and it is working and you won't find any errors or something like that. Uh, let's give this a sunlight so that you can see the bumps, that you, you can see clearly uh, the displacement right now. In this case, we also can easily change um, the amount of tiles. And as RDT is tileable, you won't find any seams. And this is a really fast and flexible way to work. But what if you have a, so to say, complex object? An object with a complex UV map where you have UV aisles and so on. To show you what I mean, uh, I use this cube and I round uh, the edges of the cube. I also want to have more segments because I'd like to show you the real-time tessellation in viewport of Cinema 4D. And when I map an, a scanned texture, like uh, real displacement textures, onto an object like this, per default you will find some ugly seams and because of the displacement you will get this kind of ugly holes here and the seams will appear in, in a very ugly way. So this is not the way how to map the textures on, onto such an object. I mean here in cinema and in other tools as well you can change the projection modes. Uh, for a cube like this a sphere might be good but you will get these poles where you also have finally stretched pixels and uh, yeah, the displacement isn't working correctly in this area and so on. But the surrounding might look okay, but imagine some more complex objects in this case also a sphere map won't work. We have other solutions, other projection modes like cubic or uh, flat. You know that with this uh, texture tools, check texture mode here, you can uh, change the pro projection direction. And I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you won't find a solution where it really looks awesome and the way it should. So, what is the solution for a problem like this? When we cannot project our material directly on the object, we need to paint it. And therefore, Cinema 4D has this body paint tool integrated. Let's take this cube and convert it to a native mesh. Furthermore, we switch the layout to body paint BP means body paint UV edit. Okay, here it is. So now we see the UV map. It's a square map. And if we select some polygons, we will see we have the same 
image on all the sides of the cube stacked on top of each other and we have this ugly poles here and there is no way to make it work to to map a texture onto it seamlessly so what we're going to do is we open up the uv tools whenever i'm using body paint i have this uv tool uh, Op uh, tools uh, toolbar open uh, to have a fast access to selection and, and scaling uh, tools and so on. Okay, now I switch to UV polygons. Now we are looking at the UV polygons. I select them all and I want to get rid of them. I want to delete them. Therefore, we have this UV commands and we can reset UV. If we do so, they are gone. Now we have to unwrap the model again. We have two different ways for unwrapping. One way is for the more complex objects. Therefore, you can select uh, lines and you can uh, save this selection, drag and drop it into this uh, selection uh, whatever and you try to unwrap I take another one here oh fuck oh, we need them both so like this set selection drag and drop it here apply so now we have the parts between those lines unwrapped on our texture field. But in the case of this cube, I can use a projection mode. Like this. We have different projection modes. They are s partly similar to the ones we've seen before uh, sphere cylinder frontal flat cubic but here in this case we also have cubic 2 cubic 2 is separating uh, these sides from each other and they are no more overlaying each other the arrangement of these aisles is not the best honestly so for example I'm going to take one of these come on and move them here and I take this one and I move it down here and now I can scale the whole thing up a little bit place it here and I scale it up so finally we get a better resolution that's the reason for the upscaling um, okay now we have the object unwrapped and that's uh, required for painting uh, on 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 this object so that are not paint on one part and the color appears for example on the other side and this side and this side as well so now everything is separated. We also need a material that is uh, furthermore used for body paint. So if I switch here to the material tab and I double click or go to create and say new material, I will get uh, material here. As long as there is this red X the material is still not assigned to body paint. I have to click on this one. So now it's assigned for the painting. And we can only paint into a bitmap. That means we also need for each layer that we want to paint, uh, we need a bitmap. In this case, we have per default the color layer 
and by double clicking in this area we create a new image we call it color it's 4k RGB 8-bit is good enough for this demonstration and we give it uh, zero brightness so we have a black um, default color what you see here is now we're gonna have this black image uh, but still the material is not assigned to this cube per drag and drop we can take it and drop it onto this cube so now we have a material we have a bitmap in the color channel and it's assigned to the object so now we can start painting if I switch to the pencil tool and I hope the color is white give it a solid white color you will see I can paint now directly onto my object which is pretty awesome but here you see one little problem when it comes to the edges of this UV aisles I can paint here as well and you will see I have a broken fall off of, of this brush and we don't like this we will get seams again that we don't want to have therefore we have this projection painting mode that we can en enable or disable let's enable it and what what's going on now is that um, the, the camera area this what what I see in the viewport is some kind of converted into a 2d area and when I start painting I, st I paint in some kind of 2D level. As long as I'm painting, you will not see anything here on the, the texture itself. But when I stop painting, Cinema is projecting this painted information onto um, the texture. So this way we can get rid of the seams. For example, here we should have one. I paint the circle and I stop painting and you will see we have one part um, of this here and the other part is here and there is no seam visible. That is really cool. So, actually we are painting a solid color and only in one channel of the material. We want to use more channels especially for materials like the real displacement textures where we use uh, a lot of shaders uh, from the material I would say the minimum to get a cool material is uh, of course the color uh, channel and then of course the displacement for the displacement we use 16 bits and we give it a 50% gray uh, level so that means no displacement if we start uh, painting or if we don't paint anything it's not displaced and a specular layer that's I would say the minimum for a cool material so now you see these black pens here for each of these uh, layers or channels if you turn all of them on you're painting simultaneously in all three channels let's switch to the colors tab you've seen that we uh, selected a solid color here before we can also switch to texture paint 
and if we do so we can load a texture from disk in this case uh, rock 11 uh, the color map same with the reflection and same with the displacement furthermore we have a scaling uh, in this case, when, when I now start painting, you will notice I paint in all three channels. And I have a cool representation of the material. And now I can paint seamlessly onto this kind of, let's say, complex object. We also have a scaling, so if we are unhappy, uh, with, with the scaling of, of this uh, texture, we can zoom in, for example. So now you see it smaller because we use the projection painting. The size of the brush is always depending uh, or linked to the viewport and not to the object. So if I zoom out and I paint, we have a large scaling. If I zoom in and I start painting, we have a smaller scaling. Uh, we can also change the scaling here. So, this is basically it. And this way you can start using real displacement texture on any kind of object. Uh, guys, I mean, I had uh, some projects to do where I needed um, woodlocks and that was... Uh, before I start scanning woodlocks, uh, what I did is I modeled some primitives that got the basic form of the woodlock and then I took one of my wood scans and painted the, the information onto it. And the result was uh, the final object was looking like it was a, a scanned object, but it wasn't. I mean, how, it's depending on how you see it. Um, okay, so this solves the problem of texturing uh, complex, so to say, complex objects. Uh, still, I want to show you one more feature of Cinema 4D that is pretty awesome. We have this real-time tessellation integrated into to our viewport. So if we turn it on for the viewport and we turn it also on for the material, double click on the material, gives you the attribute manager. And here we switch to editor tab and we turn on viewport tessellation uniform and we give it a subdivision of, uh, let's say 32. We have the lines displayed in the viewport so we switch the viewport shading mode to Goron and what you see now is real-time displacement in the viewport while you're painting I mean that's really awesome I'm rising the displacement height a bit so that it's more clear and you can notice the displacement clearly at the moment and in the same time I can go on painting onto the object it, it feels a bit like sculpting and adding color in, in the same time it's really cool uh, to work like that and now I can create um, awesome objects by using uh, the real displacement textures and paint them paint them uh, on your UVLs. So I hope uh, this is helpful for you, helpful information. Uh, yeah, have a nice day, be creative, goodbye, ciao.